Hello everyone, so this is lecture four. So in this lectures, we're going to formally define matrices um, in the basics of uh, matrices, right? as well as we're going to learn some matrix operations. We're going to do, uh, or we're going to perform matrix operate, um, operations, including addition, subtractions, and matrix multiplications, as well as scalar uh, multiplications. All right. Um, so the learning objectives for this particular lecture is to first identify matrix and the dimensions of the matrix and do um, and identify entries, rows and columns of the matrix. Also, we're going to identify the square uh, matrix, upper triangular matrix, lower triangular matrix, uh, in symmetry matrix and diagonal matrices. Okay. And okay, again, um, we're going to talk about perform, uh, how to perform matrix operations, including addition, subtractions, matrix multiplications, and um, later on matrix uh, and scalar multiplications. Okay, so first, let's again write down the definitions of a matrix. So you see this definitions when we talk about um, uh, forming the uh, augmented matrix in uh, lecture two. Oh. Um, but matrix, again, is an array of numbers arranged in rows in columns. So a matrix is an array of numbers arranged in rows and columns. Okay, so usually we're going to use the capital letters to indicate the matrices that we want to, want to work with. So in this case, you have, uh, for example, a matrix of the form one, two, three, four. Right. So this is the matrix of two rows in two columns. Um, that will be used to determine the size of the matrix, which we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, we have another matrix, so matrix B is of the form negative 5, 1, 0, 4, 2, negative 3. And let's say we have another matrix, matrix C is of the form 1, 0, 0, negative 3, 1, 0, uh, five, negative two, uh, and one. All right. So for this matrix B, you have three rows and two columns. Um, for matrix C, you have three rows and three columns. Again, those are the number that will allow us to identify the, the dimensions of the matrix. Um, all right. Some are the basics of the matrix, right? And um, there are other ways to represent the uh, uh, to represent a matrix. Right? Uh, so all the notations. Um, instead of listing out all the entries of a matrix, what you can do is you can write a s bracket a little a sub i j for um a of i a sub i j's are elements of matrix A, right? So A i j's are, are elements of matrix A, right? And i and j's are the index indices of the matrix, for i is the row index, right? And J is the column index. Now, next, we're going to identify the size of the matrix. Right? So in this case, you can see that um, a, uh, the matrix A is listed or is equal to the following matrix A11, A12, up to A1n. Um, then that is for the first row. The second row is A21, A22, up to A2n. And the last row in the matrix is AM1, AM2, so on and so forth, up to A sub MN. 
by conventions, the first sub number is the row index, and the second sub number is the column index. So this entry means that the entry A11, that means that is the element of the first row in the first column and so on and so forth. Um, so in this case, I has to be between one and M and J has to be between one and N. Okay. So there are M columns, uh, sorry, M rows and N columns. All right. So therefore the signs of matrix A in this particular case is equal to um, row dimensions by column dimensions. All right. So in this case, you have M rows and N columns. Therefore, A is an M by N matrix. Okay, so that's how you identify the size of the matrix. Again, uh, not only you can list all the elements of the matrix out, you can also use this particular notations, A sub IJ for I is the row index and J is the column index. All right, the next definitions that we're going to look at is the um, equality of matrices. So the two, matri uh, the two matrices are equal if they have the same sign and all the elements equal to one another. So let's say you have two matrices, A is equal to AIJ and B is equal to BIJ, right, then, a and B are equal if A and B are the same sign and A I J equal to B I J. All right, four. I is between one and M, right? So you have M rows and J is between one and N. So you have N columns. All right, so again, two matrices are equal to one another if they have the same sign and all the elements are equal to one another. Um, so the element of the corresponding rows and columns equal to one another. All right, um, the next definition is for the row vector. All right, so the row vector is written by this form. Uh, so you just have one rows and you have multiple columns here. So this is defined as um, the, sorry, row matrix. All right, so A is a one by N row vector or row matrix. Again, I know we haven't defined um, the formally defined vector, but um, this is another way to say that, okay, not only you can use this as a row matrix, but also there's another name for that is a vector, okay? Um, the next definition is a column vector or column matrix. And uh, there are just uh, there is just one column, but there are multiple rows. So that's why it is called the column matrix. Um, in A, in this case, the N, sorry, M, because you have M rows by one column vector or column matrix. There are some other special matrices that you may want to know, particularly for you know, linear algebra. The first one is square matrix. So a square matrix is a matrix 
where the number of rows equal to the number of columns. Right. Um, if you have the number of rows is equal to M and the number of columns are equal to N and M is equal to N, then the matrix A is an N by N matrix, right? So therefore we classify F, we classify A in this case, the square matrix. Um, zero matrix uh, is the matrix where all the elements or all the entries are zero. So, so a zero matrix is the matrix where all entries or elements are zeros. Okay. Um, the next uh, special matrix that we might want to know it, which is the diagonal matrix. So the diagonal matrix is a square matrix. Let's start with that. So a diagonal matrix is a square matrix with non-zero entries only along the main diagonal of the matrix. Right, so these are the main diagonal entries, right? Or the entries on the main diagonal. So this is the main diagonal, right? So quick note here that you have a one one, a two two, a three three, up to a and n are the entries of the main diagonal. Right, so the diagonal matrix, only the non-zero entries are along the main diagonal of the matrix, right? And everywhere else are equal to zero. So that's how you classify a matrix as the diagonal matrix. Um, the next matrix is called the identity matrix. The identity matrix is a square matrix where ones are, on it, are in the entries of the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So identity matrix is a square matrix where one are in the entries of the main diagonal in zero everywhere and zero it's everywhere else. All right. um, so you can, uh, some of the important identity matrix, I say important because we're gonna play with that a lot um, in later in this lecture and in, the, um, in this course. So you can have a two by two identity matrix, three by three identity matrix four by four identity matrix. But most of the time, if we work with a, um, the identity matrix and manipulate the identity matrix by hand, usually we just deal with a two by two or three by three identity matrix. So this is I2 or I2 by two to indicate that, that this is a two by two identity matrix. So one, zero, zero, one. Now, if you want to deal with a uh, three by three identity matrix, um, you can have I3 or I3 by three. It's going to be one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. Okay. Now, the next matrix, special matrix, is called the lower triangular matrix. Right? The lower triangular matrix. As is a square matrix, right? So is a square matrix 
where all entries above the main diagonal are zeros. Right. And you can see from this particular example, right, this is the general case of a, a lower triangular matrix because it's form a lower triang triangle like that. All right. So everything else above the main diagonal are zeros. Right. So we call this the lower triangular matrix. For the upper triangular matrix, it's going to be that all the entries below the main diagonal are zeros. And you're going to see that in this form, the triangle like that. Okay. Um, so again, the definitions of the upper triangular matrix is square matrix. Where all entries are below the main diagonal are zeros. Okay. Um, so we just went through some of the special matrices that you're going to see over and over again in this course. Um, the first one is the square matrix, right? You know, where you have the number of rows equal to the number of columns. You have zero matrix, right? which is the matrix where all the entries are zero. You have a diagonal matrix where all the entries are no zero entries only occur on the demand diagonal of the matrix. Everywhere else are zeros. Um, we also have the identity matrix, right? So the one is, um, um, ones are in the entry of the main diagonal and zero everywhere else. Um, you also have lower triangular matrix and upper triangular matrix, right? Together, the number five, number six, and number three, together, they are called the uh, triangular matrices. Okay. All right, so next we, we know about matrices. We know how to identify uh, such matrix. Um, the next one is that when you're given matrices, you can do some manipulations on that. That means you can add matrices together. You can subtract matrices together um, from one another. Sorry, subtract matrices from one another. It's easy to do additions, but it's, you need to be a little bit careful when you do subtractions between matrices. Right? You will see it in a minute. Um, so let's write down the definition first and we'll see the example and why we have to care about um, the size of the matrix, uh, the size of the matrices when we do subtractions. If A is equal to AIJ and B is equal to BIJ, right? R M by N matrices, then A plus B is equal to A I J plus B I J. Right. And the new matrix or the resulting matrix is going to also be equal to an M by N matrix. All right. Um, so we will talk about the properties of matrices in the next lecture, but for now I want to mention one very important properties of the sum of two matrices is that the sum is the sum of the matrix R, or uh, sorry, the sum of the matrix uh, of the matrices is commutative. Right? That is A plus B is equal to B plus A. So this is commutative property, right? especially for the case of the sum. Okay. However, I cannot actually say that when I do um, matrix subtractions. So if you have A minus B, then AIJ minus BIJ is going to give you the 
resolve for the new matrix. And for matrix subtractions, you do not have to commutative, right? So A minus B is different from B minus A, right? Um, so that's why um, you have to be careful when you do matrix subtractions, right? If you do A plus B, it's going to be equal to B plus A, which is good. But when you do A minus B, it's not going to be the same as B minus A. And you will see that in the next, in the following example. All right, so in this problem, in this example, you have got given three matrices. Um, and you are asked to perform um, operations of addition and subtraction on this matrices. Right? First, first thing first, you need to identify the size of the matrices, right? Just to make sure that you are allowed to perform um, matrix addition and matrix subtractions. Right? So for the uh, matrix A, so this is a two by two matrix because you have two rows and two columns. So this is two by two matrix. For B, you have three col uh, three rows in two columns. So this is going to be three by two. And C is another two by two matrix. So that means that only A and C can be used to perform the matrix subtractions and matrix additions. B is different side from A and C, so you cannot combine them together in uh, using addition or subtractions, right? So that is we can only perform additions and subtractions uh, on A and C. Right, so let's do uh, matrix additions. Um, so we do A plus C is going to be equal to one, two, two, three, plus the matrix C, which is negative seven, four, one, five. It's going to be equal to, so the first entry added with another first, with this first entry, so one plus negative seven. The second entry here, two, it's gonna add it with the second entry, four. So two plus four. Um, this entry two, it's gonna add it with the corresponding entry one over here. So you get two plus one. And the last entry is three plus five. Um, now the resulting matrix is going to give you negative six, six, three, and eight, right? So that is how you perform the uh, matrix additions, just basically add the, the corresponding entry to one another. Right? The next one is matrix subtractions. So let me do A minus C, right? So let's give me one, two, two, three, minus negative seven, four, one, five, All right? So it's going to be similar to A plus C, right? So uh, subtract the corresponding entries from one another. So that is one minus negative seven, then two minus four, right? So two minus four, and then two minus one, and the last in three, uh, entry three minus five. So three minus five. Now just give me a negative two, one, negative two again. All right. So when we say that we have to be careful with matrix subtractions because they are not commutative, right? So let's do C minus A and see what happened. And when you do that, you have negative seven, four, one, five, minus one, two, two, three, right? Um, and you will obtain the matrix of form negative eight, two, negative one, and two. 
And in a way, C minus A is negative of A minus C, but we haven't actually defined the scalar multiplications of the matrix yet. So we cannot actually perform that calculations. But we know from this two calculations that A minus C is the opposite of C minus A. Or in other words, A minus C is equal to negative one of C minus A. All right, that led us to the next step. The uh, definition, which is scalar multiplications of a matrix. So if A is an M by N matrix and C is a scalar, then uh, C times A is equal to C times AIJ or this is equal to C times AIJ. And the resultant matrix is also an M by N matrix. All right. Um, the procedure is that you can just multiply each entry of A by the constant or by the scalar. My scalar is another way to say that you have a constant by the scalar C. Okay, so let's try to follow an example given the following matrix, a three by three matrix. Right? Um, we want to find uh, what is the multiple three of A. Right? So three times A means that you're gonna do three times the following matrix, three, one, negative one negative two, eight, five, six, negative four, negative three. That means you're going to take this scalar multiply, uh, sorry, scalar multiple and multiply that with each entry in the, uh, in the matrix. So three times three is going to be equal to nine. Three times one is three. Three times negative one is negative three, so on and so forth. And the new matrix we got is nine, three, negative three, negative six, 24, 15, then 18, negative 12, negative nine. And this is a also, of course, a three by three matrix. All right, so, so far you get matrix additions and matrix subtractions, as well as scalar multiplications of the matrix. The next uh, technique or definitions that we may want to know is the uh, matrix multiplications, All right? So if A is an M by N matrix, and B, is an N by P matrix, right? So now these two matrix matrices have different size. Then the product, we call the product capital C is equal to A times B is an M by P matrix. And similar to um, matrix subtractions, you have to be careful, very, very careful when you do matrix multiplications because A times B does not equal to B times A. Sometimes A times B works, but B times A not going to work. And you will see the reason in a few minutes, okay? So in this case, we want to say that, let me use the red pen here. So A times B is going to be very different from B times A, right? There is a case where A times B equal to B times A, but that's for another lecture. But for now, in general, B times A or matrix multiplication is not commutative. In other words, A times B is different from B times A. Okay, so given two matrices, one is with the sign M times N, and another one with the sign N times P. 
how would you come up with the product with the matrix of the psi n times p? So I have two remarks here. The first one is that a and b need not be the same sign. However, the number of columns of A must be the same as the row or the number of rows. A B. Okay. So that's why by the, look at the definitions. The setup is that A is an M by N matrix. That means A has M rows and N columns. And B has the sign N by P, where N is the number of rows of B, and P is the number of columns of B. Okay. So it's going to be the setup here. So I have two um, matrices A and B. One is with the sign M by N and B is with the sign N by P. And here we need to classify that the number of columns of A has to be the same with the number of rows of B. So it has to be the same. All right. And in a way, when you multiply together, the end cancel out, like quote unquote, cancel out. And the remaining letters or the remaining sides going to be the side of the product. So in this case, my M and P combine together to be the sign of the product AB. All right. So in this case, A times B is going to be M by P matrix. All right, so now how could you actually calculate the entries of the product? Right. So let's say you have, in, um, in this case, they, they use a little bit different um, uh, notation for the sign. Right. Um, so for this matrix A, this is an M by N matrix. And in this matrix, this is matrix B of the psi N by R. So therefore, you know the product's going to be AB and the psi is going to be M by R matrix. So how can, again, perform the or calculate the entries of the product? Right, so let's start with the matrix on the left. So matrix A, you're going to take the, sorry, um, you're going to take the first row of A and you multiply with the first column of B to obtain the first entry, right? So what do I do with that first row and column? What I do is for each entry A11, you multiply with B11, entry of A12, you multiply with the corresponding B21, the entry of A13, you multiply with the entry of B31, so on and so forth up to A1N, you multiply with BN1. All right, to obtain the first entry in the product. After all of these multiplications, you combine them together using additions right, to get the first entry. Now for the I rows of A and the J column of B, now let me use a different color here. So 
the I rows and J column, All right? So again, the performance, the calculation is that the entries get multiplied, the corresponding entries get multiplied together and whatever you got, you add them up together to obtain that, the value at the I, um, it, at the I row of the product. So what I have is A I one times B one J plus A I two times B two J plus A I three times B three J so on and so forth up to a uh, i n times b n j okay um so this calculation in purple will give you the value of the first entry or the first row of um of the of the product and this will give you the entry at the i row uh, of the um, of the product. Okay. Now, after the first row, multiply with the first column. You continue with the next entry, the first row with the second column, first row with the third column, so on and so forth until you scan through all the columns in B. Then you move on to the next row, scan through all the columns in B. Move on to the third row of A, skim through all the columns in B, right? So on and so forth. And, and use this particular performance or calculations to obtain the entries of, uh, of each uh, calculations. Okay. Um, so let's do a quick example here. Uh, I have two matrices. Uh, one is A equal to two, negative one, negative one and negative two, one, two. B is equal to one, three, two, zero, negative one and two. So matrix A is of uh, the, the side of matrix A is two by three uh, because you have two columns in three, sorry, two rows in three columns. And matrix B is of the side three by two. So the product of this has to be the two by two matrix. All right, so let's do A times B. That means you have two, negative one, negative one, negative two, one, two. This is one, three, two, zero, negative one, two. All right, so two by two matrix. That means you have four entries in the matrix of the product. And I'm going to call this C11, C12, C21, C22. All right, so these are the entries of the product. So how would you obtain C11? So you choose the first, you take the first rows of A, multiply with the first column of B, right? or combine with the first column of B in the following manner. That is, you have two times one plus negative one times two plus negative one times negative one, and it will give you positive one for the answer. Now, after the first row in the first column, you scan to the next column of B, that is, take the first row of A, combine with the second column of B to obtain, oh, sorry, um, to obtain the entry C12. So C12 is equal to, right, so two times three plus negative one times zero plus negative one times two. And this is going to give you positive, um, positive eight. Okay. Now then in the next calculations, let me, um, 
what you do is you're going to move on to the next row of A. So the next row of A is going to be, you're going to take the second row of A, combine with the first column of B in the following manner. So you want to calculate the entry C21. So this give me negative two times one plus one times two plus two times negative one and we get negative two for the answer. And for the last entry, what you do is you take the, first, the second row of A, multiply or combine with the second column of B uh, to obtain the value of C22 in the following manner. So negative two times three, plus one times zero, plus two times two, and we're going to get negative two at the end. Therefore, the product that we want to get, or the matrix, or the, it's going to be uh, one, eight, negative two, negative two. So um, in example five, you want to again compute the product of A and B, given that A is equal to one, three, negative one, negative two, negative one, one. And uh, matrix B is going to be equal to negative four, zero, three, negative one, five, negative two, negative one, one, and negative one, two, zero, and six. So um, let's look at the side of these two matrices to make sure that we can actually perform the product. Right? So matrix A. So the matrix A is of the side two by three because you have two rows in three columns. And matrix B is of the side three by four because you have three rows and uh, four columns. Um, so therefore, you can actually perform the calculations on the matrix A and B. Right? So you, you can have the product A times B. Right? And the product uh, we predict that has um, the size of uh, two by four, uh, two by four. So there's going to be eight different entries uh, for this product. So A times B is going to be like there's going to be two rows in four columns. Um, so you're gonna write C11, C12, C13, C14, and C21, C22, C23, and C24, right? I mean, after a while, you don't have to actually write down um, things like this. You can just actually perform the calculations and need the answer, right? Just for, um, because probably the first time you see, um, the matrix or product or matrix multiplication. So I want to give a little bit more details on the calculations. All right. Um, so for C11, what you do is um, you're going to take um, the first row of A and multiply or combine with the first column of B. And you're going to get one times negative four plus three times five plus negative one times negative one and you're going to get 12 for the answer. Right? So I'm gonna input the entry of the matrix as I do the calculations. So this is 12. And C12 can be done by um, taking the first row of A and combine with the second column of B to obtain C12. Um, so that is one times zero plus three times negative two plus negative one times positive two, and you get positive four for the answer. So that's the second entry. The third entry is to get the first row of A and combine with the, sec the third um, column of B. And we're going to get C13 in the following manner. So one times three plus three times negative one 
plus negative one times zero, and you get zero for this entry. And for the last entry in this first row of the product, you're going to get um, the first row of A and combine with the third column of B, uh, sorry, the fourth column of B, and you get C14 to be equal to um, one times negative one plus three times positive one plus one times six, and you're going to get a negative. Um, let me be careful here. Um, so C14 is one times negative one plus three times positive one uh, plus negative one times positive six. Right, so it's, um, we're going to get negative four for the answer. Okay. And you can perform um, the calculations for the entry in the second row of the product in the same manner. And you're going to get um, the following entry, two, four, negative five, and positive seven. And hopefully at this point, you get the idea of how to do uh, the calculations for the product. So I'm gonna skip this part. Um, I'm gonna skip this part of the calculations and hopefully you can get it. If you, don't still don't get it, please let me know how, uh, if you have any questions, okay. Now let's move on to the next example. In this example, I'm gonna show the idea that uh, the matrix multiplication is not commutative. That means A times B is going to be different from B times A, all right? And I have two examples here and they are both two by two matrices. All right, for the first, problem. I'm going to do matrix A times B. That means 1, 2, 1, 1. Multiply with negative 1, 2, 1, negative 1. And I'm going to get uh, 1 times negative 1 plus 1 times plus 2 times 1. That's for the first entry. And the next entry can be done one times two plus two times negative one. Um, so that's for the first row. The second row is one times negative one plus one times one. And the last entry is one times two plus one times negative one. And the product become, so this is one, zero, uh, zero. And this is going to be uh, one. All right, so um, by doing this calculations, a two by two matrix multiply with another two by two matrix and you get the answer is also a two by two matrix. Um, as the matter of fact, this is the identity matrix, right? A two by two identity matrix. So. Now we're gonna perform the product of B times A. So B times A is going to be equal to negative one, two, one, and negative one. One, two, one, one. And we're going to get negative one times one plus um, two times one. Then negative one times two plus two times one. Um, and one times one plus negative one times one. And the last entry is one times two uh, plus negative one. Uh, plus negative one times one. Now let me double check just to make sure that I have the correct calculations here. All right, so um, negative one times one plus two times one, negative one times two plus two times one, neg one times one plus negative one times one, and one times two plus negative one times one. Okay, get that. So the product becomes, this is one, this is zero, zero, 
and this is one as well. So turn out, I pick the problem that to give me the, um, the value that a, a times B equal to B times A. So this is a, um, the case where A and B are inverses of one another. So eventually we're going to learn this as well. So in this case, we get A equal A times B equal to B times A implies that A and B are inverses of one another. Okay, so that's a very special case for the product, right? Usually in general, again, in general, A times B is not going to be equal to B times A. The only case that's going to happen, right? The equality of curves when A and B are inverses of one another. So A is the inverse of matrix B. Uh, and B is the inverse matrix of matrix uh, A. All right, so let's do the calculations, the performance for the, uh, the next example. All right, so for these two matrices, what I would like to ask you is, can you turn this into a one? I just want to make the problem more interesting. Um, so now the matrix B is of the form one, one, zero, one. Okay, so let's do the product A times B. Right? So three, four, negative two, five times the matrix one, one, zero, one. And I'm going to get a three times one plus four times zero. Uh, that's the first entry. The second entry is three times one uh, plus four times one. Um, in the next row, the first entry is negative two times one plus five times zero. In the second entry is negative two times one plus one times five. And the product becomes three, seven, negative two, and three. Okay, so that's the product A times B. Now for the product P times A, you get one, one, zero, one, multiply with the matrix three, four, negative two, five. Um, you get one times three plus one times negative two. The second entry is one times four plus one times five. The first entry in the second row is zero times three plus one times negative two. And the second entry is zero times four plus one times five. Okay, so the product becomes, this is going to be one and uh, nine, uh, negative two and five, right? So as you can see in this calculations, A and B is different from B times A. So again, in general, A times B is going to be different from B times A. There are some special cases where A times B equal to B times A. And one of the special cases is that A and B are inverses of one another. Okay. Um, and we will look into this more in the next lecture where, where we talk about the properties of matrices. Okay. Now, moving on to the next concept, um, you can turn a system of linear equations into a product of matrices, or rather the product of a matrix and a vector to equal another vector. Okay, and this is the first time you see the concept called the linear combinations of vectors. Eventually, we're gonna revisit this particular topic in, um, in depth, okay. All right, so uh, for system of linear equations, uh, one practical application of matrix multiplication is present, representing a system of linear equations. Right? So in this case, you have a system of three equations in three unknowns. Right? We, we can express this uh, system of linear equations as the matrix equations. of the form 
AX equal to B, one, where you call capital A is a coefficients matrix. Um, in X and B are column matrices. Even though we call them X and B are column matrices, the terms of vectors are more widely used um, in, in mathematics and especially in linear algebra. Okay, again, eventually we're going to do that uh, to revisit the idea of vectors. But for now, let's just accept that X and B uh, are column matrices or column vectors. All right, so from this, um, we can turn into the product of A times X equal to B. For A is the coefficient matrix of the form A11, A12, A13, uh, A21, A22, A23, and A31, A32, and A33. Um, so you get this, you pick out the... Um, uh, the coefficients, right, and put that into the coefficient matrix. And you multiply with the column matrix X, including the entry of X1, X2, X3, right? So this is where you store all the unknowns. And you set that equal to the right-hand side, which is B1, B2, B3, which is also a column vector. All right, so we do this, we want to do this because eventually we're going to learn how to obtain the solutions of the system uh, using another method is currently using the inverse of the coefficient matrix to obtain the solution of x1, x2, and x3, right? Um, but that's for later. Now we just want to know that at this point, you can turn the system of linear equation into the matrix equations of this form. Right, all of this form A times X equal to B. Now, for partition matrices, that will lead you to something called linear combinations. Right. All right, so the system of A times X equal to B can be represented in more a more convenient way by partitioning the matrices A and X in the, the manner shown below. Right. So let's say you have. Um, A to B and N, the M by N matrix right, of the form A11, A12, up to A1N, A21, A22, up to A2N. And then um, to the last row, which is A, AM1, AM2, to AMN. And the column vector X is going to be X1, X2, up to Xn. And B is going to be B1, B2, down to Bm. So why do we get uh, just M rows uh, where we have this is N uh, row? Right. So because A is the M by N matrix, therefore X has to be an N by one. Um, and therefore B is going to be M by one uh, column matrix. All right. So now what we do is we're going to set up A AX equal to B, the matrix equation. Right, so you're gonna put in the matrix A11, A12, A1N. So I'm just going to basically copy um, uh, this information down here. So A21, A22, A2N, AM1, AM2, to AMN. And we're going to multiply with x1, x2, down to xn, and equal to the matrix B, right? So I'm not care, I'm not going to care too much about vector B or the column matrix B at this point. 
just the left hand side. Okay, so what I do is I'm going to uh, do the matrix multiplications, right? Remember what you do is you take the first row of A and multiply with the column of X, right? To get the following manner for the first entry. So A11 times X1 plus A12 times X2. So on and so forth up to A1N times XN. Right. Then you're going to take um, the second row of A, multiply with the column of X to get A21 times X1 plus A22 times X2 up to A2N times Xn, so on and so forth into the last row. In the last row, what you do is you're going to take the last row of A, or combine with the column of X. Then we're going to obtain AM1 times X1 plus AM2 times X2 up to a m n times x n right still equal to the right hand side which is the common vector b okay um now from here what you can do is you can partitions um this uh, matrix into the following uh, uh calculations okay so now as you can see this part of the this part of the matrix have one thing in common which is x1 right and this part of the matrix has one thing in common which is x2 and this part has one thing in common which is x sub n right now, if you recognize the pattern that way, what you can do is you can store all the coefficients, A11, A21, and A up to AM1 into a column matrix and get that multiplied with X1, which we can do because that is the scalar multiplications. All right, so we can do this, right? We can store A11, A21 up to AM1 and do that to multiply with x1. And for the next partition, you do a2, sorry, a12, a22, up to am2 times x2, so on and so forth, up to the last part, which is a1n, a2n, down to a m n and you multiply with x n and this is still equal to the right hand side vector b or the column vector uh, the column matrix b okay um and if we turn this matrix uh, column matrix into a vector notation so vector notation it's just the um the letter with the arrow on top right so you can turn this into, um, right, I call this A1, I call this vector A2, and I call this vector AN. Okay. And I can rewrite this as A1 times X1 plus A2 times X2 up to AN times XN equal to B. Um, in other words, you can do, x1 times a1 or vector a1 plus x2 times vector a2 and xn times sorry xn times vector an equal to vector b right and this particular representations right is called a linear combinations of the column matrices and so this is called a linear combinations of column 
matrices or vectors, right? Call them vector of A1, A2, of 2, vector AN with the coefficients uh, x1, x2, up to xn. Okay, so that is how you have to, you have a, a system of linear equations, you can turn that into a matrix equations of the form, um, ax equal to b, and then you can further partition that matrix uh, equations so you can obtain something called linear combinations of column matrices of column vector with the coefficients of x1, x2 to xn. Right. This is particularly useful for later part of the course where you have to do with linear combinations of, uh, of vectors. Okay, so. Um, Let's go to example seven. Now you have this following system of linear equations of this linear system. We can rewrite the system in terms of the matrix equations of the form AX equal to B, right? So we, where A is the coefficient matrix, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine and x is equal to x1, x2, x3, and b is equal to 0, 3, 6. Okay, so you can turn that in the system into a matrix equations, all right? And you can further partition this um, matrix, uh, matrix multiplications as follow, I'm just going to follow uh, whatever I have uh, from this um, calculations right here. Right. So you can turn that into one, four, seven, multiply with X1 plus two, five, eight, multiply with X2 plus three, six, nine, multiply with x3 and it's going to be equal to the right hand side, 0, 3, 6. Right. And to obtain the solution of x1, x2, and x3, at this point you have multiple ways to do, to obtain the solution, right? Again, you can use substitutions method, eliminations method, and Gauss-Jordan eliminations method. And um, another way, a fast way to do is just input this um, system into an augmented matrix and use Python to give you the solutions. And you will find out that there is infinitely many solutions uh, for the system, for this particular system. So um, because there's infinitely many solutions, I'm just going to pick out one solution so that I can play around with the idea of linear combinations of columns vector or column matrices. Um, we can find the solutions of the system using the Gauss-Jordan elimination method. Um, we find that there are infinitely many solutions. For the system. Okay, um, and one of one of the solutions is that x one equal to positive one, x two is equal to uh, one, and x three is equal to negative one. So um, this is I already calculated myself, um, and. You, actually can follow the same manner in using Gauss children in the same method to see that there's infinitely many solutions for the system and then you can choose a free variable 
and then from there you can choose any uh, any value for the free variable and to obtain the remaining uh, variable in a, in the solutions right so this is just one set of solution remember there's infinitely many solution for the system in this uh, example all right um so i just want to quickly give the solution so that i can talk about the combinations right and right so the linear combinations of column matrices Uh, is right, so you have the uh, column matrix or column vector multiplied with one plus the column vector two five eight multiplied with one again plus three six nine multiplied with negative one uh, to get the column of the form zero three and six Right, so this is the linear combinations of the column vectors or the column matrices of, um, of the coefficients matrix A, right? And when you do that, when you do the calculations of linear combination, it's equal to the right-hand side of the system. Okay, um, so that's it for me for this lecture. So in this lecture, uh, what we do is we look into uh, the the formal definitions of matrices and the basics of matrices, as we are, as well as we talk about the matrix operations. There are um, addition, subtractions, scalar multiplication, and matrix multiplications. And you have to be careful when you do subtractions and matrix multiplications because sometimes it's um, it's not going to work. It depends on the size of uh, the matrices given to you. Right? So you have to be careful there. Uh, in the most part, for the most part, um, for matrix multiplications, um, A times B is going to be different from B times A. Right? But there are some special cases where A times B equal to B times A. And one of the cases is where A and B are inverses of one another. Another interesting part about matrix uh, or matrices is that you can turn the system of linear equation into a matrix equation. And from there, you can do a lot of things. And one of the uh, result of that matrix, uh, matrix equations is you can partition the matrices so that you can have something called linear combinations of column matrices or column vectors, which is again very helpful for us later on in the course. All right, so I'm going to stop right here. Please let me know if you have any questions.